So far within our trig functions, we have seen our three ones, which at this point we should be very used to, either from previous knowledge or just from having looked at them for quite a while. These would be our sine, our cosine, and our tangent. So just for a moment, I want to take us a quick step back into our, what we used to do with them, what we used to know them from, and that would be Sokotoa. In this case, we're going to be introducing three other types of functions that are representations from sine, cosine, and tangent, and are additions to it. So in this case, we know that Sokotoa stands for sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, that cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent was opposite over adjacent. And these are all in reference to a right triangle and its sides, where based on the angle that we choose, we would have an adjacent side or an opposite side accordingly, as well as a hypotenuse. So in most cases, whenever you end up with a question like this, you're given the angle and you're given one of the sides, but you need to find a missing side. In this case, uh, I believe in the examples I have something like this. And so given the angle, given the sides, you're able to find that missing side because you could just plug in uh, accordingly for opposite over hypotenuse. If we were looking at angle A to have adjacent over hypotenuse and using the accord, uh, the according trig function. And we could just plug into our calculators and now we could actually kind of see that uh, those degrees, if we set them as radians, we could actually see on the graph where they came to. So based on the graph, we could see what sign of uh, 2 pi is, what sine of pi over 5 is, and so on and so forth if we take our degree and turn it into a radian. But we want to take a look at the case where we know the sides of our triangle, we just don't know the actual uh, angle, whatever that angle is. So in the example I have in the slides, our missing angle is at C. So we don't know what angle C is, but we do know that our hypotenuse is set as 23, and one of our sides is 14. So now we would have to take a look at what our, we would set up a function based on what we do know, because uh, at the moment we can only go as far as we know, so we know that if we plugged in whatever x is into sine, because we have an opposite over hypotenuse, then we would be able to use the numbers given. At that point then, we introduce this new knowledge we have, being the arc sine, the arc cosine, and the arc tangent. Ultimately, it should be very easy to remember because it's just putting arc in front of our already existing uh, trig functions. And these are our inverse functions. Something I hope you guys remember about when you take the inverse of a function, regardless of whatever that function is, uh, you get left with x as a result. So as a quick kind of look back, if we had, say, a function f of x, then what should happen is if we put that as an input for our inverse, then we should end up with x as a result. And you could do this the other way around as well, that putting an in the f inverse of a function inside of that same function resolves, results us in an x. So this is exactly what happens with sine, cosine, and tangent. If you were to take the sine of any number, in this case, let's take the sine of 
pi over 4 because we're trying to work more with radians here and then I put in the arc sign which there are two naming conventions for these it is either arc in front of whatever the function is or you take the trig function and set it to the negative one power as the inverse of it that's how you'll end up seeing it typically on calculators so if I were to write down sine to the negative one power that is the equivalent of arc sine if I were to put down cosine to the negative one power that is the same and tangent to the negative one that would be the equivalent of saying arc tangent so this should give us our final answer of the radian pi over four so now we have this knowledge of the inverse and actually what the inverse is called we could place that into our current equation so if we place that into our current equation well the left side is pretty obvious because we will set down our arc sign or uh, since I don't have all the space I'm going to set that down as this type of arc sign which should result on our left side is that the sine and this sine to the negative one should cancel out leaving us with just x however something to always remember about any equation is if you do something to one side we have to do it to the other so we get left with the inverse of sine of our number 14 over 23 so when we have this placed in then we will plug into our cal our calculators uh, the sine inverse of 14 over 23 which ends up being just about equal to 37.5 I believe it is 37.49 uh, some uh, 49 and so we round up to the nearest tenth there and we set it to 37.5 is equal to our x and so that's what we're going to be looking at a little bit getting used to this idea of the inverse and accordingly set which inverse we use and also see the numbers we end up getting generated from these variety of values on the right so just as a quick look uh, quick recap we have our general th uh, three trig uh, functions. These aren't our only trig and vector functions and we will be looking at a couple of other ones as well but for the most part these are our base uh, functions and from those we end up getting our inverse functions. Next as well we will most likely be taking a look at the graphs how these look uh, but by taking the inverse of said functions we cancel them out giving us what is on the inside so that does not necessarily mean that it is just x because at this point we have seen a variety of different types of alterations we can make to these functions we can end up with two times sine of 3x minus 5 and so we get given what's on the inside of the sine function no matter how complicated or simple uh, it is on that inside section this should be a fairly uh, simple uh, don't overthink it too much just understand that the inverses cancel it out giving us the inside and you do it to both sides if you have to add it onto an equation I hope you're all staying safe I hope you're enjoying the day stay safe and healthy